Somebody wanted another ring tutorial, so I'm gonna draw this out for you carefully so you see I am not the expert on rings or whatever, but all I know is it works for me. I've made thousands of them, I've sold thousands of them. So here's basically it. You just, I start making a base, I wrap it around the ring mandrel one or two times, and then, so say step one, base, that's the flat part at the top. And step two, wrap ring part, the actual ring part, part goes around your finger. And step three is secure the ring to the base on top. So here's step one form this, step two, form this, and step three is make this connect somehow, wrap it around, wrap it through, do something so that this part and this part are strong. And here's the fun thing or the, the frustrating or whatever, however you want to see it. As you're securing it, there's ways to secure it that just secure it and then there's ways that make it really pretty and swirly and all kinds of there's a million different things to do i'm going to show you some the best thing is you guys just got to experiment 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 don't be afraid to spend money on some wire and some stones and knock out a hundred rings over a couple weeks don't be afraid of half of them you feel are garbage you want to throw them in the trash i bet i could take any of your rings you give me and throw an extra little piece of wire and do something to them if they need it and make what you think would be the worst ring pretty and sellable. And that's just because I've just messed around with enough wire and I've forced myself past the point of frustration so many times that I pretty much have no fear with this and it, you shouldn't either. So anyway, I'm gonna show you some. I have like five other ring tutorials that you could look at, but I'm gonna just break down some of those Here's the, other, the only other thing I'll say on paper and then I'll go right to the real stuff. There's two ways that, main ways I do. One is my one piece of wire thing, one wire, and that's usually 20 or 18 gauge. You don't go thinner than 20 because the 20 is already so flimsy. I was amazed people would even buy it, but after selling thousands of them, I'm not amazed anymore. 18 is a little stronger. You, 16 is ideal, the problem is 16 is so thick, it's hard to find stones that are, have holes drilled big enough that it'll go through. 18, most even small chips, a lot of 18 gauge will go through. So 18 is really a good one. But this one piece of wire, I basically take, take one piece of wire, I put the stone in the middle, um, I wrap it around the ring, ring mandrel, and and then I come back up and I bring the wire around and just tighten it around that stone. That's it. I might put a few swirls or something, but I don't have to. I can just tighten it. Simplest ring ever. Here, let me show you one. See this? Simple. Stone. I went through the stone. I wrapped it and then I wrapped a circle around it. And then I tucked in the two ends right there. That's it. Simple, but with a, a swirl. You know, I went through it. I made a swirl and then I did the same thing. Simple. Very simple. Let's get the camera to focus. Um, again, simple. And I had one weird one to show you. Um, this one, I went through it. I did my whole thing. And then when I came up back over the top as part of securing it, I put a fun swirl. That's where you can really experiment. And there's no limit. You can spend an hour doing the most advanced swirls on earth. So this is my one wire technique. Boom, one wire. My other main thing and I don't do this as often because it, instead of taking me two minutes it takes me five minutes and I get very impatient when I want to make a hundred rings but my other very common one number two is thick wire it's two basically two part thick wire base and I'll do it like this sometimes I'll just make a, a little infinity and make the wire and then it's two part, thick wire base, thin wire to secure and add stones. 
So I'll show you that one too. Sometimes I'll just I'll just make a swirl or a, something real simple. And then I come back in with my stones and thin wire, really thin wire. And I'll take that thin wire, put the stones down and thread that thin wire through like that. So that's basically the two ways I make rings. The one wire method is the easiest. One wire, but if you wanna be fancy and you wanna take your time with your rings, the two, two wire method. That's really what that is called. Two wire method, one wire method. That's what I'll show you here. All right, let's do this. Okay, I'm gonna use 18 gauge. Like I said, this is my favorite really for my, if I could do 18 gauge forever. A 20 gauge is faster and easier, but I, I just feel like the flimsiness is like, wow. I can't believe you guys will buy these rings, but. Um, and this is also like very little wire. This is a foot, it's a foot of wire every time. It could be a lot less actually, it could go down to like eight inches. So just test your stone first, make sure it'll hold 18 gauge and boom, that works. Bring it to the middle, middle of your wire. Now um, with these chips, sometimes I'll just go like this and I'll wrap it around the chip, but sometimes if I feel like it has a definite flat bottom and a kind of bumpy top, I'll decide this, I want this to be the top, I want this to be the bottom. So in that case, I'll crimp it. Crimping it is always the first step. Instead of wrapping it around the stone, I will hold this very tight and do a little swirl on the top, and that makes it so pretty. I don't know if you can see, this is a very dark blue stone, and the antique brass is dark, dark stuff. Dark, dark. I need to pay somebody to just keep focusing this camera. Okay, so how many times do you go around the swirl? However many times you think is good. Simplicity often is more elegant than like busyness trying to overdo it. But try both extremes. Try being really simple and really busy and find your happy medium. So then I always bring the two together. It's just how I do it. You don't have to do it that way. Some people will just wrap them from up opposite ends around the mandrel. I like to bring the two together. Here's my mandrel. Let's do uh, an eight. Press it flat, firm. Pressing, always pressing, always putting pressure, always making it tight. Come around one side. Sometimes I'll turn this on an angle because I like to have it like that. Okay. Pressing, pressing. I'm pressing here. I'm pressing top and bottom. I'm pressing from all sides, holding the stone really tight. I just make a circle. This is part of securing it at the end. Make a circle around my piece. And that's it. These two ends are going to be cut right here and tucked deeply underneath. All right. Um, this is a little off center from the circle I made. So I, I can uh, adjust that if I want. Or I can just be happy with it and just let it be, you know, take it off. Here, cut it, leave about a centimeter, half inch. Separate these. I, I, I like to do them separately so I can really get them each one in good. And I'm holding the pliers very carefully so I get a position of strength. I'm not hurting my wrist. Bending it in, just pinching it, pinching it, pinching it till I feel all the sharpness is pressed in. It's not going to pop out the top. It's pressed into the stone or the wire. And then E6000 always makes it extra carefully strong. It's not going to come out. I'm just rubbing the gummy stuff off the top. And boom, give it one good wipe. Turn this upside down, let it sit for five minutes and it's ready to wear. That's that easy, seriously. There's your ring. Voila. Now you could do multiple chips like this, even with the swirl. You could just stack them together and wrap them. That's the easy way. I've done that on like three tutorials. You guys don't need to see that again, but here's a fun way. Let's uh. Make sure, first of all, these all are going to fit my 18 gauge. I'm doing anti-copper this time. I love anti-copper. It's such a pretty color. All right. So here's my uh, focus, you weirdo. Here's my top. And I'm kind of in the middle. I'll go a little further in the middle because i got to fit three of these. So I did what I just did. Bend, bend. And now I'm going to make my little swirl. To make my little swirl. Okay. Now, instead of wrapping around and around this time... I'm gonna come with my swirl like this and, and make like 
a little bend, a little alcove, and fit the next stone with a little bit of space so that stone can be straight up and down too, just like the first one. So um, slide this on. Oh, I didn't test it. Let me get a different stone. There you go. This one fits. And um, all right, let's do this. Bam. All right. So now they're kind of even, like side by side. Try to make you see it. There we go. Okay. So they're kind of resting side by side on an even playing plane, right? And now we can swirl this one. Pretty swirl. Voila. Now, let's put our third one on. You can put seven, 21, I don't care. All right, again, don't put it right up against there. You won't have room to turn the way you want. Give it a little bit of space. Bend it so it's on the same plane as the other two. And then crimp the top. Make your swirl. There we go. Now, these three can be in a row. They can be in a triangle. You can you could turn them any which way you want. Um, but basically, they're flimsy now. We gotta get the security down. So let's make our ring. Bring the two ends together. And the endless possibilities, as, as one guy said, who has put a comment like, you can come from here, you can have these jut out this way, you can have them come, anything you want. This is where I often give myself too little wire because I'm trying to conserve the wire. Like give yourself a little extra just in case. But let's take this, and put it on the mandrel, press tight, come around. There we are. Okay. Uh, let's go for the triangle look. Force him over there. And notice uh, this swirl is coming out of where we want it to be. You're gonna have to fight your wire a lot if you're, unless you want to just let it do whatever. Otherwise, you're gonna have to fight with it. But never, never come to the point where you get frustrated, where it emotionally upsets you. No, this is supposed to be fun. At the end of the day, this is just your playtime. You're just a kid. You're just playing with blocks. If all the blocks fall down, you're just building more blocks. All right, see that? So come around, and I make the circle around there and tuck it, that's it. But if I had extra wire, which I didn't, I can come over the top and make it more secure. I come over and wrap around and around, come over the top, I can make a swirl and wrap around, a swirl and wrap around. I can make swirls sticking out all around here. The possibilities are endless, and it's still one piece of wire, which is super awesome. Super simple, super serial. All right, so that's off. This is cut, and I'm just gonna tuck them together because I'm getting impatient now. What? Pinch them both in there. Reposition them if you need. Bam. Nothing scratching. P6000. Wipe off the excess. Make sure you didn't squeeze any E6000 out the top or it looks gummy. Nope. Okay, these are both still type 1 ring. Let's do a type 2 ring. This is 16 gauge. Thicker. Stronger. New and improved. So... I'm working without the stones now. I'm just making my ring. And the actually the most, the video with the most views right now is just how to make these simple rings with 16 gauge. So have fun with that. But here you go. I make the ring like that. And then I don't even need this much. I am just making a base. So I'm just gonna come around here, grab this tight, come around here. And I basically just want to get these sharp ends tucked in so they're not going to poke anyone. But sometimes I'll just make this into like a little circle. But see that? Nothing fancy. It's a base. I'm flattening it. 
flattening it from every position so it's totally perpendicular to the ring. Okay, it's a nice flat base. This is our landing pad. And now we're gonna add stones however we want, get a very thin piece of wire, thread it, and tighten, wrap it down with that. Super easy. I went from super thin to super thick to super thin. This is 26 gauge. And how much are we gonna take? You really need like five inches. Let's take seven to be safe. And thread these little guys on here. You could do one stone. You could do a really fat stone. Sometimes I'll just say this. Sometimes I'll take like a flat cabochon or a flat bead like and just lay the whole thing on top of there and then take the thin wire and just wrap it every which way to get it super tight. But um, in this particular case, I'm just showing you how to put a bunch of little ones on, which you've seen like four other videos if you've been watching. Voila. Let's turn them in a circle. They don't have to be a circle. They could be a line. They could be any way you want. But let's fold that over there. You could, you could do anything. There's really no right or wrong. I'm going to sec start securing these right now, even though I said I'd do it afterwards. But just get a little extra security. There we go. I wrapped over the top a few times. So now they're staying in a cute little circle. Okay. Now, these two ends, they're like probes or antennae. And they're going to come straight down through here. Watch this. And just stab right into the holes. rip -a. Voila. Place them where you want them to be. Hold them tight. Thread them tight. Okay, like, I'm just threading up. And this is where you just decide where you want to do it. Like, I'm going to come up over the top right here. I literally decide in the moment every time. I don't have a set pattern for this. Sometimes the stone is a different size. Sometimes I'm going for a different look. All right, and pull that tight. Pull it tight. That's the important part. Pull it tight. Oops, that one popped out. You're going to have stuff pop out and move until you get a few until you get wire tightening it from a few different positions. Um, this is where you just want to look at positions. You want to get it tight from different sides. That's what really strengthens it. Tightening it from one side is good. Tightening it from two sides is so much better. Tightening it from three sides is usually like amazing. And then beyond that, it's just whenever you think you're ready. So, um, Pulling tight, pulling tight. Some, and sometimes you're just threading it around one little tiny section. One little, you don't. Every time you wrap it around, it doesn't have to wrap around multiple stones because they're all threaded together anyway. And sometimes, if it still feels wonky, you can come around the same stone twice. Or there's no really no rules. So, the only thing I'm going to say is, make sure you have enough wire for what you know you need to do. And then, when you feel like you've tightened it enough, and these none of these stones are going anywhere, make sure you have about an inch left, or two centimeters. And because this wire is really thin, I don't like to just tuck it. I like to roll a, uh, a little swirl first, because that makes it more substantial, and that makes the um, sharp end much more hidden. So it doesn't have to be a fancy swirl or a big swirl. It's more just to hide the wire. So you see the teeny, teeny, tiny little swirl. And I'm just going to, well, I'll, I'll roll it all the way to the end. And then just shove it in somewhere, somewhere where it, it disappears. And do the same with the other one. Now, another thing you can do with these little swirls is you can just fold them right over the top so they look pretty, like that. And you can literally grab it like this and fold it over very top to be like the little piece at the top like that. Um, the only thing I'm gonna say is, if you don't take the other wire and wrap it through to secure it, this thing is like fl floppy, flimsy, and somebody just brushes it and the whole thing is gonna go wonk out. So, uh, took a ton of bit at your 6,000 and just hide it in there, just for that little, uh, if you want to put that 
swirl up there just just a tiny bit you don't want it to show tiniest bit sometimes i'll put e6000 on a on a little on the end of a spare piece of wire so then i can apply it very very liberally or uh, not liberally very in a tiny amount whatever uh sparingly but i'm also this guy will want to pop up like a spring so if you're going to glue it down make sure it's it's pressed down there while the glue takes and I'll um, put the lid on. This stuff dries out quick. Yas. This is a nozzle of one of the rings I make. I'll show you some others in a second. You know, I'm going to show you guys one more. This is a really cute, fun one. And I, I didn't have any made, so I'll make one for you. This is a mother of pearl. This is uh, slightly bigger than a centimeter or a half inch very flat drilled hole a hole drilled through it but it takes very thin wire so we're going to use it just like the last ring very close similar 16 gauge all right let's do silver this is 16 gauge german silver this stuff is stronger than copper and non-tarnished oh it's really got to muscle it in it bounces more it doesn't want to stay you got to be careful if you're not if you don't press really carefully you'll get a weird oval from this instead of a nice circle and it wants to keep bouncing out but you know what see I, I have to go down to the lower numbers just to make that ring because it wants to keep bouncing to a higher number okay I think we're good now and this is a tiny stone we just need a small base we don't want this wire to stick out so we're just going to do the simplest little tiny little nothing just cut it here oh stuff is hard to cut even so you work with this you're gonna need a protein shake where'd my pliers go now watch the epic struggle of ugh, muscling this tiny little loop out of this very there we go flatten it where are we do the other side. Make sure you have a good health plan before you attempt to use this German silver. Okay. There we go. Still, uh, yeah, that's about right. I cut it even tighter somehow. All right, now look at this. See it like that? You want it to be perfect. This has to be really, really perfectly flat. You can even make it bevel up a little bit if the bottom of your stone is round, but you want it to really just be flat, like holding the stone. So that stone just rests right on there like that. Nothing sticking out. Okay, this is 24 gauge, regular non-tarnished silver, which is basically silver coated copper. Much softer, easier to work with. Um, take your stone, decide which part you want to be the top. Thread it through. Come to the middle. Bend them both down at a right angle. See? And put them each through one of these loops. Yeah, I don't think, I think I took too much, but it's okay. All right, and it descends like a spacecraft, like a helicopter landing. Doot, 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 doot. Bam. All right, pull it tight. Um, whoops, that one's trying to get out the wrong way. Okay, bend them back up over the loop okay and now we do our fun part wrap them across the face of the stone and do crazy swirls I'm gonna start with this do -si do swirl like two people linking arms doing a square dance wrapping around and around and around this is one of the prettier rings I make and yet I get so lazy because it's just two parts wire I don't do it that much. 
Look at that. So pretty. You can push the swirl off to the side and then do a little loop-de-loop. -loop. Press this loop-de-loop -loop really tight. There we go. And then come back around because it's still kind of wobbly. It's, it's, it's held in there, but it's, it's bouncing around. So we're just make it really tight. Now our wires are together. And we, we, I went back down, around, and over. And now I'm going to wrap it around this side. Come around through the ring, over. And it's getting tighter. I feel it getting tighter. This is the fun part. You can come over the top again. Let's, let's be wild. Let's be crazy. Come over the top again and give it even more of a pattern. You don't want it too busy, but experiment with what too busy means. Because sometimes you think it's too busy and it just comes out looking amazing. And I'm glad I took that much wire now because now I'm running out. And I think that's it. I'm going to... Do a little curly cues, end it, and E6000, and that'll be a pretty ring.